so let me start with uh, uh, how data science is going semantic in today's world uh, i've seen uh, the lot of schedule lot of people have already spoken about data science so why very briefly i'll introduce data science and then i'll dwell into how it goes semantic so uh, as she already introduced i am sarika jain from nit kurukshetra and uh, for those who are new to research community and wish to pick up a trending topic uh, they are bombarded with a never ending tale of jargon uh, the most commonly used and often confusing being data science machine learning artificial intelligence uh, this session is just about that that is why data scientists need semantic intelligence uh, in addition i will focus upon semantic intelligence also that is still untouched by the most and a very important aspect of data science the agenda of the session is cutting through the jargon the current state of ai and ml that is artificial narrow intelligence road from ani to agi semantic intelligence and its benefits and before closing i'll be discussing some of the venues of semantic intelligence i'll conclude certain takeaways then a list of selected bibliography Uh, let us start with the scientific and the technical overview that is uh, cutting through the jargon uh, all of you uh, uh, might have watched the terminator the matrix star wars uh, think of the conscious entities emulating human capabilities and at times even exceeding them uh, this is artificial general intelligence strong ai machines become humans AGI is the ability to carry out different tasks that a human could do. Till date, we are not able to achieve AGI. It's just a dream. The machines with AGI are conscious, driven by emotions and self-aware. Look at uh, some of these examples. Uh, May nineteen ninety-seven, IBM Deep Blue. Conquers world chess champion Gary Kasparov. May 2017, Google AlphaGo wins over world number one Go player Chinese KG. These were games. Then in chatbots, Feb 2011, IBM Watson was victorious at Jeopardy. Uh, IBM Watson in fact supports 11 languages as of March 2020. Uh, there is semantic search. Google decided to call it semantic search as knowledge graph. Digital assistants, Badu's personal assistant, Duo. Uh, it is accepting KFC orders at KFC restaurants in China. Uh, then we have speech recognition application applications. Uh, you might have seen Apple, Siri, Amazon Alexa. They are answering questions and also make recommendations. We have driverless cars. Then weather forecast. The form of AI we actually work in today's date. That is all these applications as a sample. is the artificial narrow intelligence weak ani ani is the ability to carry out a specific task so ani excels in uh, one specific task doing it much faster and much more accurately than a human the problem with ani is that it can only perform the task it is trained to do artificial general intelligence is artificial narrow intelligence plus ability to reason plan and solve the problems think abstractly comprehend complex ideas learn quickly and learn from experience so in today's date we are with artificial narrow intelligence we want to reach artificial general intelligence that is what is happening in the terminator the star wars and we are fascinated about that but we are not able to reach there till now then comes artificial super intelligence the oxford philosopher and leading ai thinker Nick Bostrom defines super intelligence as an intellect that is much smarter than the best human brains in practically every field including scientific creativity general wisdom and social skills artificial super intelligence to come from 2050 onwards is the ability to learn from its experiences and from new data to perform a wide range of actions and to generate new computer code on its own to help achieve its objectives uh, asi in fact is the type of ai that may lead to extinction of the human race as well from the planet let us see uh, what is machine learning as uh, i provided a brief overview of what is artificial intelligence 
uh, let us i have brought only one slide for machine learning because you have already gone through it in this fdp so this is the machine learning view from 20000 feet by given by andy jefferson in one of his talks at at connected data london uh, you can see here that we train the parameters of our model uh, if you see uh, in this table m and c in this example we train the parameters of our model using the data that we have once our training is done we have some learned parameter values and we have a model that we can use to make predictions this is machine learning you all know machine learning falls under the umbrella of ai that uses data to train the algorithms in order to perform a task it provides systems with the ability to automatically learn and improve from experience without being explicitly programmed till ml was not there it came uh, it, it has started from 1980s in the in academic arena before that it was only artificial narrow intelligence and machines were not able to learn at all machine learning provided that to machines meaning that machines learn automatically and also adjust actions automatically uh, services like recommendation systems on netflix and youtube search engines like google and yahoo voice assistants like uh, google home uh, amazon alexa all use machine learning in one way or the other uh, what data science means to experts let us have a, a quick overlook of on it uh, wikipedia defines data science as an interdisciplinary field that uses scientific methods processes algorithms and systems to do what to extract knowledge and insights from many structured or unstructured whatever data so the job of a data scientist is data collection analysis visualization and even decision support so uh, in a nutshell data science is the extraction of knowledge from data as this wikipedia definition says and everybody says uh, and it is a bit different and a special and a generalized area of data analytics what we call before Uh, previously we used to say data analytics today we, we say data science as it is in a broader sense it includes data analysis in a manner so we know that it's all about data uh, idc is a, a global company for the global data sphere it predicts that more than 59 zettabytes of data will be created and consumed in the year in the in the world this year the global data sphere will grow from 59 zettabytes as you can see here in 2020 it is approx 59 zettabytes in 2020 to 175 zettabytes to by 2025 idc is a premier global provider of market intelligence and advisory services it helps it professionals make decisions make fact based decisions on various technology purchases so it predicts that uh, since the same data is being processed again and again as you can see in this covid situation also uh, the same data is being processed again and again driving the unique data sphere down to 10% of the total data sphere previously or in today's date also we can say the unique data created and captured by replicated data means that is copied and consumed is 1 is to 9 but by 2024 it will go to 1 is to 10 so it is going down to 10% the unique data sphere will go down to 10% we need to take care of it uh, we understand that by now the data is exploding like anything let us look at some of the timeline or uh, let us see till the last 20 years most of the data was structured as found in rdbms and search results also uh, then there was a sudden rise in visual data with an increase in streaming services and internet broadcasting now started a trend of data flow towards natural data as as uh, many call it natural data the user generated data a uh, multi model data image video and speech all come in this category and making it centralized gets costlier so it stays in its own location as different data lakes and uh, the various characteristics of natural data are unstructured it is it is imprecise dynamic distributed real time the challenge here is that we need to deal with natural data not only the visual data or the structured data and dealing with natural data is in itself a problem another problem is 
that because making it centralized is a problem and very costlier so we allow it to stay at, at its own location as data lakes and we need to interoperate by making it stay at its own location we need to interoperate and it is also heterogeneous because it is unstructured real time distributed imprecise and also dynamic that is sporadic data we are getting have a look on the data science timeline uh, a history in fact uh, it uh, i have taken it from towards data science uh, you can also have a look there Uh, the beautiful tutorials on every data science topic are available there you can see the neural nets as we started in 1943 1980 machine learning started neural nets uh, uh, bombarded in 1943 but that to in only in academic field relational databases the course rule 1970 1996 you can see uh, there are from data mining to knowledge discovery to databases A, uh, a paper came there and we started beginning working on knowledge discovery in databases you can see the data science journal was found founded in uh, 2002 then uh, 2006 you can see came across hadoop knowledge discovery in databases again uh, uh, it was founded as a journal also 2011 the concept of data lakes as i just said that they stay in their own place as separate and not connected to the other data we call it data lakes a new concept came in from 2011 2017 you can say the concept of data fabric we call it came in data fabric what we say is we have to provide a fabric we have to tie the knots of those data we have to connect that data uh, we, we do not want to work with discrete data it is to be continuous it is to be connected to each other to uh, to generate inferencing to generate a uh, beautiful insights from the data to generate the implicit knowledge from the data we need to have relationships between the different pieces of data that are there in the data lake we have to connect those pieces and uh, into we have to bind it into a data fabric so uh, i come to the contrast of ai ml and data science as we have just introduced what is ai what is ml and let us see how it contrasts with data science and how data science comes into picture in between ml we have just said is a branch of ai it is used to uh, it is uh, to use statistical models to make machines learn with experience ai imparts human intellect to machines and also provides the decision support the actionable intelligence i should say and how data science comes into picture it includes various data operations to deal with any type of data and is based on strict analytical evidence i repeat it is again based on strict analytical evidence as it is tied up inside ml models we need to analyze the data that is based on again the statistical evidence as it was there for the machine learning approach uh, let us let me explain it with the help of an example look the application of automated car driving here uh, consider a self driving car uh, it is uh, let me say it is trying to stop itself at the different stop signs on the road so what ml will do it will help in recognizing stop signs using its cameras uh, uh, may i like to interact with the audience so uh, will any or any person from the audience like to speak upon how ai will take care of it uh, i can see 42 uh, 46 audience are there echo is not coming here yeah, now it's okay fine so somebody from the audience uh, dr indi how do i interact with the audience uh, i am open if they raise their hand and uh, they speak up in between and they ask their queries i am okay with it otherwise Uh, after end of a certain portion, I can take the query. Yes, ma'am. As you wish, they can interact in between. Also, okay. they can write okay. the Fine. queries on chat window. Also. Fine. Thank you. So I will like uh, the beautiful audience out here to come up with an idea of, as I have told, how ML is helping here in detecting the stop signs and making it stop for the self-driving car. ml will recognize the stop signs using its cameras so will anybody like to speak upon what ai will do here 
the self driving car want to stop itself using the stop signs how ai comes into picture will anybody like to speak upon it uh, you can uh, unmute your mic if you wish so okay uh, let me continue on it and uh, uh, i will like my audience to interact also if they wish so in later slides so ai will help in decision making ml has recognized the stop signs and told the driving told the car that this sign is this and a green light i can see i can see a red light convert it into vector and deduce something with some accuracy now the task of ai will be to take decisions it will help in decision making to apply the brakes immediately at exactly the right time as soon as a stop sign is recognized now again the question is why do we talk of data science how ds comes into picture so data science helps in analyzing the reactions of the trained car how the trained car reacted did it stop immediately as ai told it to stop or it didn't with what accuracy it followed the instructions so this data science will be helping to improve upon the ml and to improve its accuracy with data science we come to know that there can be a certain number of false results also maybe uh, due to the time of the day our car tends to miss stop signs at night actually most of the training data include objects in full daylight uh, so we add a few night time pics also now after ds told us so we add a few night time pictures also to improve the machine learning and this cycle goes on goes on as a virtuous cycle i should say data science is not exactly a subset of machine learning but it is applying machine learning in a practical situation data science uses machine learning for analyzing the data sets for extracting useful insights and for making future predictions it combines ml with various other disciplines like big data analytics and cloud computing simply said ai makes the tools and ds uses the tools and data science cannot do without ai ml so i hope uh, i have uh, provided a sufficient contrast between ai ml and data science to proceed further have a look on the ai ml data cycle and how ds fits itself in between we have data preparation task data engineers join the data from multiple sources transform it in required format and it, it and make it ready for model training then you build the model you train the model the data scientists apply ml techniques to build the model and to train the model then comes deploying the model is deployed and it is up to ai now to provide recommendations then you need to monitor it to ensure the mod model accuracy so here is building and training data scientists experiment with different tools and frameworks to train the models better and to provide better learning that is i should say to provide feedback also to make it better so uh, it is like certain benefits let me list first one being convert data into competitive advantage to maximize benefits and optimize the outcomes uh, uh, this is by understanding the various correlations so this is ai ml is benefiting to data science if ml is not there how will optimizations be performed to understand uh, so we you understand the correlations using ml in order to optimize the outcomes ai ml allows us to be proactive rather than be rather than being reactive so uh, what do we mean by being proactive rather than being reactive being proactive is more powerful as now we can drive our own results so uh, i have also yes this is the slide for uh, to explain i can uh, devote one minute on this also you can see here uh, there is descriptive analytics that is looking back on the data then diagnostic analytics then pre predictive analytics then prescriptive analytics we have and finally we have applied learning analytics so for descriptive you are saying what went wrong in descriptive analytics you are looking into what went wrong in diagnostic you are seeing why it went wrong 
why did it happen what what were my weak points you are you have interactive visualizations to look into it you are diagnosing the problem in prescriptive and predictive what it is in come we come down in predictive analytics you are uh, looking for planning for the future trends and predictions you are predicting using machine learning i should say you are predicting then in prescriptive analytics you are you are looking what is happening now now you have to optimize here data science comes into picture you need to optimize for a particular outcome and go go with a predictive prescriptive cycle to optimize the outcomes so we have two more terms apart from these four types of analytics we have two more terms they are reactive analytics and proactive analytics and reactive analytics deals with the two d's descriptive and the diagnostic and they influence the future they are the simplest form of analytics proactive analytics deals with the 2p that is the predictive and the prescriptive analytics and these two analytics influence the past influence the past as you can see in descriptive you get simple reports in diagnostic it is all up the example or the query drill down for prescriptive data mining and optimization techniques comes into for predictive you have regression analysis forecasting all statistical machine learning approaches are there <laughs> and finally you are applying learning analytics so uh, next benefit of ai ml to data science is it makes better faster and more efficient decisions <coughs> uh just a second so ai ml is helping in making better faster and more efficient decisions it is helping workers focus on what they do best and leave the rest to machines so being creative and thinking critically comes into picture thinking critically so it is helping convert the sub sub subjective data into the objective analysis uh, as you, you come across sentiment analysis so it is quantifying the feedback so here i come and and to introducing ai ml and data science and we now understand that ai and ml are necessary for data science let us have a tour on the current state of ai and ml that is i just introduced artificial narrow intelligence ani so we will look into the both the paradigms of ani research symbolic ai we'll discuss the problems with symbolic ai sub symbolic ai and then the problems with the sub symbolic ai <clears throat> until the last decade which ai was there we call it symbolic ai uh, you might have heard of expert systems good old fashioned ai we call it rule engines the traditional ai this is the symbolic ai these were the very first attempts to ai 1950s till 1980s uh what i can say follow a prescribed set of rules designed by experts to deliver consistent results uh, if you people have done a course in artificial intelligence so you might have read certain books on ai all the standard textbooks of ai teach about propositional logic first order predicate calculus lisp prolog if then statements is man x if you remember the branch and bound problems heuristic search a star search no algorithmic training is involved in it they are dynamic verifiable and explainable model so here are certain applications of symbolic ai mycin you might definitely have heard of mycin for medical diagnosis there is prospectal for mineral exploration dendral is there as a chemist as a knowledgeable chemist i should say 
uh, i am introducing the term knowledge here to say as i already told data in data science we are converting data to knowledge so that has already started in my slides dandrel is knowledgeable chemist mistral is to monitor the dam safety so all these are examples of applications of symbolic ai as i say the first paradigm of ani research but there were certain problems with symbolic ai let us have a look on them very briefly they are hard to build they are costly and time consuming uh, why because uh, if you remember we used to work with lisp and prolog with prolog we used to work with facts and rules so rules are created through human intervention that is why we call it costly and really time consuming uh, hard to maintain not able to imitate all the processes of human cognition especially perception it is not able to imitate perception robotics learning pattern recognition as i already told learning is not there in symbolic ai till 1980s another problem is monotonicity Uh, i don't know whether uh, monotonicity you are aware of let me uh, describe it in very brief monotonicity means it is one of the stumbling blocks of symbolic ai that is difficulty of uh, belief revision is there once the rules rules have been encoded in the rule engine you cannot surpass those rules you cannot overwrite those rules as soon as some new knowledge is added you cannot undo the old knowledge that is called monotonicity and expert systems are highly monotonic so there is difficulty of belief revision the more rules you add the more knowledge is encoded but these additional rules can't undo the old knowledge uh, right monotonically basically means one direction that is when one thing goes up another thing goes up also so the system is not able to learn the system is not able to grow that is why i said machine learning learning was missing with symbolic ai systems and this was a major problem which was overcome by machine learning statistical systems as they came in 1980 another major problem was symbol grounding problem uh, people used to work with text with words and symbols that is some natural language the problem here is how do these words or symbols get their meaning the symbols are not able to link to any non symbolic representation some vector representation some matrix representation uh, some numerical data so you are not able to have some scientific observation over this text data like neural networks can do it today the symbols are converted to the vectorized representation so the point to emphasize here uh, the point to emphasize here is that symbolic reasoning is very adequate for reasoning about mathematics they work on small closed systems and these closed systems should be very well defined with very well defined properties such as the game of chess symbolic ai will work very well for the game of chess unfortunately there are multiple dead ends which which are quickly reached it was found the philosophers already had predicted that you could hardly build a machine capable of reasoning about the real world through pure symbolic means so we need to think something else so we came to the sub symbolic ai what is sub symbolic ai from 1980 onwards there were significant breakthroughs as i already said in machine learning the sub symbolic approach to ai manages to approach intelligence it is also approaching intelligence it is also ai but without specific representation of knowledge you do not need to represent the knowledge in the form of facts and rules as we were doing in the symbolic approach you do not need to do that you do not need to represent the knowledge now in machine learning algorithms we call it machine learning connectionist ai or statistical ai at some times this is sub symbolic ai uh, we have various different variations which have appeared of sim sub symbolic ai embodied ai robotics computational intelligence and soft computing that is fuzzy systems neural networks the most connectionist approach is like ann support vector machines come into this category then it is statistical ai from 1990 onwards uh, for utilizing the machine mathematical tools we call like hidden marco models are there bayesian decision theory is there these are the statistical models to ai but the field mostly remained only in the academic research till the rise of deep learning 
as in 2007 now uh, again i like to emphasize why do we wish to utilize sub symbolic ai and why not stick to only the symbolic that's for system approaches because uh, how does sub symbolic ai works without being explicitly programmed as i just said the machines are trained the machines can execute a task without programming machines learn automatically and they also adjust the actions automatically uh, for example an autonomous car is there it is driving on a road it has never seen before it can drive on that road also using ml algorithms so ai research is becoming more and more scientific the results obtained are measurable they are reproducible and now you are calculating the precision recall f measure the various evaluation parameters make it more scientific and you are able to calculate upon it which we were not able to do with the pure ai approach that we read in rich and night uh, the exact beauty of sub symbolic ai will be um, uh, can be more explained by this classic example of translating a note from language a to language b suppose that you had a man in a room and his job was to translate whatever note is slipped underneath the door to him from language a to language b he is to translate he is inside the door and we are slipping the note inside so it seems like a very simple and a workflow you slip the note he will translate you get the note back but if he has symbolic ai what he will do he doesn't know language b himself he there is no learning algorithm he cannot learn language b what he has is a huge dictionary a huge library converting english to, converting language a to language b translations for him to use to put together a finished product in front of you so what he does he receives a note he looks into the dictionary uh, a big journey and uh, generating his reply so it is non it is symbolic ai but if he would have been a non symbolic a sub symbolic guy what he does he knows language b now he has learned language b now using some ml algorithm he has been trained to speak in language b now the machine has already been trained for it what he does he receives the note just translate it in a flicker of second and sends it back so this is the beauty of sub symbolic ai which was not there in which, which is not being taught in the rich and night this is machine learning this is sub symbolic ai yes a very beautiful approach so you train the models these deep learning or statistical approaches require mainly three elements very large data centers lot of computing power and huge data just three three, three, three things and we are done with it so it brought a breakthrough in ai research and ai has been brought to market provided commercially viable solutions it is providing commercially viable solutions with great accuracies so ai has been brought to market and not it is not confined to academic books and academic research only many many companies the market has already taken over the ml and dl the neural nets the deep neural nets also and they are working with it so we need to look into what is missing in this second approach to ai that is the sub symbolic approach that is ml dl connection is neural networks so this is very important to understand the most critical distinction between machines and humans is actually because the way in which we reason the human beings reason about the world and the way machines reason how do humans do they reason through uh, uh, abstractions they reason through semantic abstractions and how do machines do they blindly adhere to the stats only an ml algorithm lacks the background knowledge as the point one i have brought in front of you they lack the background knowledge that is the context sub symbolic approaches are self contained and they are not well integrated with the prior knowledge so it is making them brittle and easy to fool they search for correlations in data rather than meaning example Uh, this is also a very good and famous example of classifying outdoor dogs and indoor cats it will likely to fail uh, it if if it has been trained that uh, given pictures of cats then in general it will find the best signal from all those pictures 
like the surroundings of cat they are near the house and for dogs it will say outside the house so it has been trained like that so a machine will likely to fail to correctly categorize an outdoor cat if it is given a loin it will say it will look at the surroundings of loin and just say it is a dog instead of saying it as a cat because it is it is unable to separate objects from their context this is the problem another major problem is diversity in training data which is so critical to ensure that machines see a wide range of counter examples that cancels out various spurious patterns i should say this is not at all realistic so we cannot provide such diverse training data to a machine to learn there is overfitting and underfitting problem the input features have to be very carefully selected and normalized also having too many features or not having a correct representative data set that covers most of the permutations will lead to either overfitting or underfitting of data stability assumption is already there in ml algorithms data driven algorithms implicitly assume that the model of the world they are capturing is relatively stable and then only they are able to work the cold start problem is a very big problem because sub symbolic ai is data hungry the whole approach of deep learning is based on the assumption that there will always be enough data to learn from another is monotonic reasoning it is the same as with the symbolic approach they were also monotonic even the sub symbolic approaches are again monotonic we have to remove this problem retraining but retraining is necessary to adjust the new incoming data and with retraining yes we are able to uh, get the known monotonic inference exception handling is there exceptions uh, in ml algorithms are treated as noise for instance uh, for exception handling uh, i'll say if the training set consists of uh, various descriptions of birds and these birds are classified as whether they are able to fly or not then the records which are concerning penguin or ostrich will be just treated as noise and they do not take care of that so this is exception handling is not there and it is treated as noise by the ml or dl algorithms they are missing common sense reasoning you know kaggle provides everything very neatly packaged as compared to the data of the real world which is very sporadic open ended inference is again important ml models can only answer questions if they can be explicitly inferred that is there is a difficulty to represent nuance i will uh, provide one example of uh, this representing nuance in the last slide as we go through for example john promised mary to leave john promised to leave mary it is not clear who is leaving whom in mission critical applications that is for example out of distribution inputs and surroundings of an autonomous vehicle it is always a problem have a look here you can see uh, there is a motor scooter motor scooter there is a bus there is a school bus the yellow one is a school bus the red one is a fire truck the blue one is a motor scooter so this is an example where you can see a motor scooter gets confused for a parachute just because it was toppled over a school bus got confused with a garbage truck or a punching bag similarly a fire truck with a school bus so this is out of distribution input and also the surroundings of an autonomous vehicle can be if can be effectively inferred by algorithm ml algorithm but with a certain level of probability uh, but the chance of error is never acceptable in the mission critical applications because if you could drive off a cliff just because that scenario was never captured properly by a machine in the sample training data will be really problematic then just recommending a wrong movie to you so mission critical applications you have to take care and in ml yes you can miss the training data for these applications will be very critical i have come to the last problem for sub symbolic ai the black box ai so you cannot see inside there is lack of model interpretability and explainability in finance and crime it is a major problem if an individual is denied a loan you need to explain to him why your loan has been denied if a suspect is convicted you need to explain to him for health reason also if a person is asymptotically diagnosed with a deadly disease you have to explain to him 
because the symptoms are not there then also dl is saying that you have this disease and with this much accuracy you have this disease for a human being you have to explain to a human otherwise they do not believe you the sub symbolic ai is in fact actually uh, automatically extracting the patterns and rules from the large data sets and they are automating the classification task but why exactly the things are classified in one way or another cannot be explained by a dl algorithm and if humans are not explained of some decisions there is a risk of making a wrong decision which may always outweigh the benefits uh, again the same if you see the language translation example learning language b was not at all a difficult task by a machine it has learned but it is not able to explain how it has translated in a flicker of second it is translating the note now after ml models have come but it cannot explain how, how it has translated so one solution yes in fact is one shot learning that is to train the neural networks using much smaller sets of training data so let us look into it how we come across a solution so when utilized separately both the ani approaches i have discussed two ani approaches artificial narrow intelligence approaches one is symbolic approach and another is sub symbolic approach and both these approaches when utilized separately they have uh, problems as just stated if utilized separately they are good but they have various problems as just stated we are yet not able to achieve the artificial general intelligence there is a gap to understand to start with let us start with uh summarizing the challenges we have the challenges and opportunities of ai and ml then we'll we'll see how to mind this gap a paradigm shift from data to knowledge as data science comes into picture the semantic technologies and the knowledge graph as a beautiful semantic data model so before going deep into it i will like to take some queries if there are any uh, let me have a look on the chat box Uh, yes, uh, Yogendra Prajapati is saying he has a query. You can you can unmute your mic if you really have. Uh, if anybody has any query, they can raise it. Otherwise, I'll go further. okay thank you so much i hope there are no queries uh, i don't know why either uh, the audience may be listening may not be listening or the other reason can be i have beautifully explained and i am happy for that thank you okay so i continue with it uh, let me go from uh, on the road from ani to agi so the various challenges and opportunities i can see i have uh, uh, 45 more minutes so i have to quickly rush through i am just half the way uh, let us now see what we lag behind by summarizing certain challenges and opportunities that are faced by ai ml and data science the first one uh, i have already told you the data silos the data lakes we have low data quality and data silos the data scientists are spending their major time in data acquisition and the data silos are making the problem worse there is there is loss of information and also information bias is there traditionally data scientists engineer the feature vectors but uh, this may result in loss of information and can also introduce bias interoperability is a very very big problem what if we are required to combine the results from multiple heterogeneous data silos multiple heterogeneous data lakes so we we require a common representation to solve the interoperability problem uh, next is big data the information overload you can see we are getting data from iot data event information collective intelligence and lot more we need to make this data as an enabler to address the gap of inter and it is the big data is coming as an interdisciplinary area of computer science we have poorly solved information needs you give answer if you are asked to give answer to a specific question so to support very precise and structured queries 
as search engines are giving only the documents they are not giving data or information uh, with certain exceptions yes today in today's date google search is working towards it uh, using its so called knowledge graphs i'll come to it redundancy is a problem the different data sets are talking about the same entity but using different uris so the redundant information you can say barack obama somebody says barack h obama somebody says president obama senator obama president of united states and you do not come to know exactly that how they map each other mostly the data is unstructured and at times semi structured also uh, certain more scalability all of you know how to keep functioning with the growing amount of work and data the vastness is there vagueness is there the imprecise concepts fuzzy logic comes into picture uncertainty if the concepts are in fact precise they are not vague then they are uncertain this comes into picture and probabilistic reasoning solves it inconsistency that is the logical contradictions and deceit is also a major problem that certain things are misleading to you so the focus is on data all starts with data data is the most important asset for all these tasks before we apply machine learning ai ml or dl or analyze it what we need we need to have data analyze it acquire it clean and standardize it we need to understand the data very well uh, i will Already told what is a data lake as a centralized repository of any type of data stored in its natural format. I, it can be SQL, it, it can be JSON, XML, uh, it can be structured, unstructured, RDBMS, RDF, any format. So these are data lakes staying at their own position, and data lakes have become a de facto standard today for organizing the data. So where is the problem? Without the required management and governance capabilities, these data lakes. based on hadoop or cloud storage have become have uh, converted themselves into what are called data swamps a data swamp is a deteriorated and unmanaged data that is uh, some that is at times inaccessible to the users or uh, if excessive if they are accessible then they are providing little value why because all the challenges that have just discussed because maybe they are interoperable they are lying at their own place you are not they are heterogeneous you are not able to work upon them so they lead to data swamps now how to solve this problem data is there but you are not able to access it they are not providing value to it so you need to mind the gap there is a gap between the potential and the delivered value there is a gap between the data and the actionable insights and value a recent study conducted by forester and ulet uh, packard enterprise surveyed around 5000 plus machine learning practitioners it was found that only 14% of the respondents had uh, had a defined and repeatable and scalable process to op to operationalize the various ml models uh, in fact to operationalize the models means to deliver certain value with a range of uh, demonstrable projects and more than 86% of the companies have yet to formalize the process and they are struggling to operationalize their ml models so operationalization is a problem it also includes those which are still in the proof of concept stage so this is all surprising there is a gap from the quantity of available data we are able to manage the quantity using the hadoop solutions but the amount of data which is useful analyzed is a problem the quantity of analyzed data if it is there then the amount of data that is in fact put to operation there is a gap between them and, and a big gap i can see and this all is so surprising that it as uh, it is already 7 years or more from where we entered the age of analytics 3.0 in 2013 and we are still there as uh, Uh, the study as i just mentioned of uh, ulet packard enterprise for 5000 plus ml practitioners i said 86% more than 86% of the companies are still struggling to operationalize their ml models you can see in this beautiful diagram as they have told to mind the analytics gap you can see the total data with a black chart because of hadoop solutions we are able to put more data 
the data is increasing you can see with the black line the data is increasing like anything under the black curve but all this stored data is not analyzed and we get the insight gap the blue curve is the analyzed data again all the analyzed data cannot be put to operation we come to execution gap the dotted line is the operationalized insight so the operationalization problem comes into picture often abbreviated as o16n the operationalized problem is there with more than 86% of the companies in today's world so how do we solve it we have to focus on knowledge as dikw the very famous pyramid says we have a paradigm shift from data to knowledge you can see from the bottom data referring to the raw facts numbers and symbols what is information context and value add meaning to data in the context of date for example if you say uh, 20 06 and then in the context of date it becomes 20th june 2020 so it gets meaning it becomes information as soon as it gets meaning it becomes information and with experience into it it becomes knowledge and this experience in today's date is only with the human beings what is there with, what is what is the problem with machines they do not have knowledge because whatever task they are being trained for they use is they use only that they do not have any background experience they do not utilize any background knowledge so we have to utilize this background knowledge to perform the task then only we can attain knowledge and that background knowledge from that background knowledge we get the relationships if you define the relationships and you understand the patterns in a better manner you say that you have achieved the knowledge then intelligence comes into picture when you are able to judge when you are you are able to provide the actionable insights as human beings we say that we have achieved the wisdom and in today's day we are still at information the ml algorithms are still at information we need to bridge this gap and reach from information to knowledge let us see how do we do that you can see here as you go down the meaning is decreasing as you go up it increases green is, is speaking that it is increasing upwards value equivalent to human as you go up means you reach to knowledge from information you can achieve a value which is equivalent to human so how do we do that is enabling technologies are the semantic technologies the data science has to go semantic so these are the various semantic technologies i will uh, provide a very brief overview of it and the ml or the dl technologies you might have already gone through in, in this fdp the various libraries and frameworks of ml and dl python keras tensorflow cafe pytorch cyano apache mxnet you have already gone through maybe Uh, let me provide a overview of semantic technologies now uh, semantic technologies uh, basically use the formal semantics to derive meaning from disparate sets of raw data that is the data lakes this is done by using tools methods and techniques as you can see in this picture so uh, how do we go through you can see the timeline starting from 1988 to 2014 for the development of various technologies starting from the simple web technologies unicode http html as the foundation technologies you can see uh, you reach to then came the serialization format xml the data model rdf rdfs xml all these technologies yes i will not go in detail of all these technologies and uh, uh, owl is there rdfs rdfs and owl are for uh, deriving the schema we can have a separate session for explaining all these semantic technologies because this may in itself take a complete day so in a brief have just visualize what all techno semantic technologies are available with us so rdfs and owl are for defining the schema rdfs is rdf is for the data model for the format for the semantic data model we have rdf then you have swrl as the rule language you have owl sparkle is for querying as you use sql 
for querying an rdvms we use sparkle for querying the semantic data models uh, then you can see the various standardization formats as we move on the right you have rdfa micro formats json ld turtle so till 2014 you can see i have brought this timeline because till 2014 most of them have been standardized till date and we just need to use them now moving down the cost of operation is increasing moving up it is increasing moving up the cost is decreasing and what is increasing is the effectiveness efficiency the semantics are increasing so this rdf the data model as you can see in between rdf data model we have to utilize if you have to increase the semantics of any data you should utilize the rdf how to utilize the rdf the data staying in the data lakes in any heterogeneous format is to be converted into the semantic data model using metadata into rdf so knowledge graphs comes into picture here let us see a brief overview of knowledge graphs uh, graphs are everywhere in the field of computer science itself we have many applications of graphs with a rich history starting from the 18th century you might have come across the euler graphs then for transport social graphs the four cube the famous traveling salesman problem in today's date we have graph databases knowledge graphs semantic graphs and many more google uses page rank algo to rank the its web pages in its search engine page rank is again based on the web graph also the google's knowledge graph for info boxes is gaining popularity so knowledge graphs are to be used in today's date for uh, for the semantic interoperability uh, for example the google search problem if we take an example you have to search for tim berners lee uh, anybody of you it is a very important uh, name to know who is tim berners lee so anybody out of you know who is tim berners lee can any one of you please answer who is tim berners lee if you people have come across his name who is tim berners lee no uh, they have given some berners law in the physics i have studied uh, this person in physics 11th or 12th uh, class Mm, uh, not exactly bernoulli theorem I, bernoulli theorem yeah 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 for for computer science he is the person uh, who has given the concept of web www and ah, tim bernoulli yes 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 in today's date the <laughs> vision of semantic web is given by tim berners lee and whatever semantics semantic technologies i am talking about we people have inherited from the semantic web given by tim berners lee Uh, the semantic technologies were first time used in the semantic web and from there we are saying that use it in industry also for all types of applications uh, we have inherited the knowledge graphs from there and uh, what my today's presentation is about is incorporating knowledge graphs and semantics into the ml and ai approaches we need to marry the symbolic and the sub symbolic approaches that is the theme of today's talk so in google if you need to search for tim berners lee in the old google then a search for tim berners lee how it uh, takes care have a look in today's date in google it looks into dbpedia wikidata and various different sources and fetches information from these sources and creates a knowledge graph then provide search results or recommendations or put to any other application you can see from wikidata what it is picking it is picking the sibling of tim berners lee that is mike berners lee the voice audio it is picking from there residence concord usa it is picking from there from dbpedia it is picking that he has two children the spouse is rosemary lee and nancy carlson he has two spouse so from two different sources it is picking the information data science the extraction of knowledge from data i didn't understand go away do it better somehow do it. 
so from this knowledge graph what i mean to say that knowledge graphs have come into picture and data science is exactly the extraction of knowledge from data how do how can we do data science if we utilize knowledge graphs then we are able to extract the knowledge from data so in today's day understanding knowledge graphs has become a major importance knowledge graphs build a rich user experience by combining knowledge regarding input keyword from multiple sources so the recommendation here i draw is that use semantic web knowledge graphs for augmenting machine learning problems with the background knowledge does human mind think in terms of relational database of course a no it is much easier to pass information between our heads and a graph our human beings understand graphs in a more easier manner than a relational database then why do i use a relational database i should use a knowledge graph so i will use knowledge graph i will not use a relational database understanding an erd is much easier than understanding tables and what is erd it is a graph why do i work with tables i will work with a knowledge graph relational databases store highly structured data in tables with predetermined columns and rows you need to integrate and harmonize the relevant data while the graph databases map multiple types of data they are for connected data and rdbs are for the discrete data problems we have ex examples of graph databases anzo allegro graph neo4j virtuoso all of them connect to the data lake and creates a graph a knowledge graph obviously automatically that is the this knowledge graph is an analytics ready data set not a rdbms an example uh, uh, of why do we use a graph database and not a rdb uh, you can see the first normal form problem in rdb an attribute in rdb if it changes later on from single value to multi value then a solution with the existing rdb is how do you do you have to delete the complete column uh, and you have to add a complete table for that multi valued parameter to convert it into one ns it is time consuming it will remove all the indices it will uh, they will be invalidated all the previous sql queries written on that table will get invalidated so in contrast you use a graph data model which is incremental in nature the data scientists can now focus on solving problems then ending with just dealing with and cleaning the data so my recommendation here is to use graph databases as compared to the relational databases you can visualize here this picture has been taken from the neo4j you have a various data stores in their own format they have stored the data in the bottom you can see the, and the knowledge graphs provide a 360 degree view of an entity its surrounding entities and all the relationships you see data is being picked from all the data stores and connected together in a knowledge graph in addition to providing answers these knowledge graphs are capable of explaining them also so how are these knowledge graphs put into intelligent applications have a very high level abstract view of it in this slide you have data sources in any format as you can see on the top you transform the data integrate it and perform nlp on it and you get a knowledge graph out of that data from all the data lakes you get a knowledge graph now you apply algorithms over it any algorithm you want any you want to do ml task you want to do ai task recommendation text understanding entity recognition anything you do it and then you can develop intelligent application semantic search question answering link prediction or anything so uh, come to uh, have a brief overview of the various knowledge graph applications one very important is link prediction we call it knowledge graph completion also some others knowledge graph completion tasks are triple classification entity classification and resolution uh, just try and understand uh, we in rdf we work in the form of triples that is subject predicate subject object predicate sop so uh, if it is uh, predicting entities in a relation to given entities then for example you do not know the director of psycho movie how do you do that to predict the director of the film this is link prediction from the knowledge graph you can pick it similarly if you do not know 
who uh, that um, alfred hitchcock is director of which movie so the question mark is on the predicate is on the object to predict films directed by uh, i have made a mistake here i have written venom uh, the film directed by alfred hitchcock so this is the link prediction problem there is relation extraction is there so for relation extraction it aims to extract relational facts from the plain text where entities have already been detected for example given a sentence alfred hitchcock directed psycho so uh, a relation extractor should predict the relation director of between these two entities that what is the relation from from this text the relation is director of question answering systems you can ask a question in natural language who directed psycho and the answer should come alfred hitchcock recommender systems yes of course providing advices you can do all these and many more using knowledge graphs very simply so let us have a look on semantic intelligence and its benefits as we come across on the road from ani to agi i say that you have to marry both the approaches of artificial intelligence and you get semantic intelligence on the road to agi i briefly introduce what is semantic intelligence it refers to filling the semantic gap between the human understanding and the machines there is a semantic gap and semantic intelligence fills it how by making a machine look at everything in terms of object oriented concepts as we humans look at it all the important relationships in the data who what when where how why from Uh, any heterogeneous data source are required to be made explicit in the form of knowledge graphs in a semantic data model and then you are able to achieve the semantic intelligence so see, the other terms for semantic intelligence are machine intelligence as opposed to machine learning because we have combined both the approaches the symbolic and the sub symbolic and we reach to machine intelligence we call it contextual computing also and the hybrid of knowledge engineering also there is a beautiful top down bottom up contrast when we talk of semantic intelligence one way of looking at these is the top down approach towards intelligence the semantic technologies is the top down approach to intelligence so how it is you feed in learning and knowledge from the top it is this sort of approach of learning Uh, that human beings are immensely powerful because human beings work with the symbolic approach where each successive generation of scientists and engineers can access and learn from the theories which we store in the knowledge in the form of books developed across generations this is exactly the exactly how the human baby is learned how to perform certain tasks simply how they do it by observing their parents that is the top down approach they observe their parents and copy their actions and they learn this is the symbolic top down approach on the other hand machine learning techniques can be said to be bottom up approach towards learning where one is exposed to mass masses of unstructured data and you work out patterns or correlations for example the human babies learn to walk they observe the parents they find out the patterns how to walk over numerous tries till they refine a particular solution and human beings do both of them human beings follow the symbolic approach also and they follow the sub symbolic approach also that is why we say the machines also should follow both the approaches together and we call it contextual computing semantic intelligence machine intelligence so a marriage of both the approaches is required so these are the various reasons we i have already covered more of much of them and uh, i have a few more minutes with me so i will just uh, make you read it you uh, you can have the video also later on and you can read them out uh, the different uh, reasons why why a data scientist should use should work with semantic intelligence i have already gone through them in my previous slides and here is a summary of most of them so last is to improve machine learning no mystery should be there explainable ai should be there so uh, the recommendation here is that data scientists need semantic intelligence to achieve the artificial general intelligence so the machine intelligence goes semantic
there is an abstract view of what we call today now symbolic data science also the knowledge data science have a high level view of the exact framework a data scientist faces data you can see the documents the unstructured documents are there the raw unstructured measurements as well as knowledge you can see from dbpedia wiki data the knowledge graphs are there this is the structured symbolic representation the aim of data scientist is to there are two the aims either to utilize the existing knowledge in data analysis you can say the knowledge generation or to apply the methods of data science to knowledge about a domain that is generating knowledge from knowledge in cases where data itself is not sufficient then you do not have any alternative than to utilize the background knowledge and many successful implementations today have already been there uh, which have used this approach i will bring in front of you two of the two to three of them have a look here this is inspire and ai that is the minerva intelligence inclusive it is a private company focused on bringing the benefits of ai to mining industry and other industries so the emphasis you can say the, uh, this is the complete ai which it is using the emphasis is here embedding human knowledge in machines to solve the problem of insufficient training examples and human knowledge resides in the various literature as you can see inside these books so this is the focus the terminology is ontology semantic networks the knowledge is to be embedded which will provide the metadata you can see on the right the magnetic survey imaginary as the raster imaginary these signals are being transformed through perception and converted into vector representation then pass to ml algorithms and more so see on the left hand side more sophisticated machine learning algorithms can label these lines and polygons which have been taken from the sensory images and contribute to more accurate reasoning using the semantics that we get from human understanding over the decades in the form of books or we can even code them in the form of knowledge graphs and finally you get the conclusion and advice along with the explanation so this is also the same i can skip it for the time being have a look here it is very important if you people develop an interest in uh, utilizing the semantic technologies for the explainable ai i should say have a look here on this diagram the traditional represent as i said machine learning doesn't depend upon the representation and what i say using the symbolic approach using the knowledge graph you should represent them in a better manner so that you you are able to provide context to your data otherwise the data is not context sensitive when it is fed to the ml algorithms and context is a problem and the traditional representation approaches fail to capture the nuances in the semantic meanings what is the solution one solution is the embedding model the embedding models make natural languages computer readable embeddings are the vector representation which capture the context also we have many embedding models available with us in today's date bert to vec glob bert are there uh, see on the left there is a diagram uh, if uh, i explain it by an example this is the contextual dimensional modeling diagram uh, an example of the social media post by islamic uh, as the same uh, this manas gaur and amit shet Uh, they have used in their paper in 2019 the knowledge infused learning they have explained it with this example uh, you have post by islamic extremists and islamic moderates or the known extremists then they reflect different contextual dimensions the islamic extremists share fewer islamic concepts while the islamic moderates do share the islamic concepts there is Uh, again ambiguity in meanings in terms like jihad both of them the extremist have a different meaning of jihad and the non extremist that is the moderates have a different meaning of jihad see on the left the data is coming the social media data is coming and you are representing this data using the using the uh, corpus 
which is dimension specific corpus dimension 1 corpus dimension 2 corpus dimension 3 corpus you are utilizing the word to vec model and getting the representation based upon the context whether whether the context is an extremist or a moderate and then you are applying ml over it so this is the beauty of representation that you are able to apply context also so this is the contextual dimensional modeling uh, with the plain word to vec as you can see our word to vec globe word charts these are the embedding models now when we say that knowledge graphs are better representation models we have the knowledge graph embeddings as the low dimensional representations of the entities the various kg models are trans e trans are rascal and many more uh, you uh, place us you place a scoring function and you devise a model a knowledge graph embedding model to measure the distance of two entities related to its relation type to you and they are used to train the kg models the scoring function uh, look at uh, this diagram i am coming to the end of my slides and this is the neuro symbolic intelligence system as given by uh, the same authors the manas gaur amit shet and kursumku uh, the neuro symbolic intelligence systems by virtue of knowledge infused learning they help overcome the obstacles of a lack of quality training data the poor interpretability inherent bias in the data set is removed and also the non explainability of models is removed removed what is the idea the idea is to infuse the necessary conceptual information into the deep learning architecture and the conceptual information come from these knowledge graphs as you can see so the data is coming from the left the domain specific corpus as i said contextual modeling the domain specific corpus corpora is also coming and you are representing the data based upon the context and after that it is fed to the various neural net uh, layers and before the output layer comes you are feeding the knowledge from the knowledge graph the cd sub knowledge graph also into it before you are getting the final output in the output layer so this is the idea of knowledge infused learning not only machine learning so it is boosting the recall also in fact and that too without affecting precision let me have a overview of the various semantic intelligence venues in front of you we started with 1987 with the international conference on knowledge engineering and knowledge management then came triple ai international semantic web conference is a very famous conference it started in 2001 uh, for the semantic web and the semantic technologies all the knowledge infused learning it covers eswc is there ontology summit is there then icsc gist and semantics then there are joint ontology workshops and in 2021 fab 2021 our group also have initiated a conference the international semantic intelligence conference for this year we have we are done with all the Uh, submissions uh, acceptance or rejection so for next year if you people feel good you could consider this conference for as for semantic intelligence here i come to a conclusion from a very good book by david pule and ellen macfort foundations of computational agents artificial intelligence is the synthesis and analysis of computational agents that act intelligently so the actions should conform to the goals and circumstances see here to the agent we are passing so many things not only the data past experiences are there the stimuli stimuli from the environment is there prior knowledge as the background knowledge is there we tell it what its goal, goals are and what its abilities are that is the model the agent is flexible to changing environments and goals also the agent is learning from experience so this is the definition of in fact artificial general intelligence there is a learner either a deep learner or a machine learner so you, but the past experiences as you can see is also fed to it the the prior knowledge is also fed to it to the machine learner the background knowledge is fed to the learner and it is able to do and because the background knowledge is there so the inferencing is there now the knowledge graphs are embedding inferencing into it and you are able to get the actionable intelligence 
so this is the today's definition of artificial we are leading towards artificial general intelligence uh, there are a few takeaways while a large part of data science relies on statistics and applies statistical approaches to artificial intelligence there is an increasing potential for successfully applying symbolic approaches as well the symbolic method should become a crucial component of the data scientist toolbox the key here is that we are not looking for possible answers but we are seeking an answer and for seeking yes we have already worked hard and we are going on the same road also so these are the various takeaways the keywords for you to note down if you wish so so that the newcomers can take a research area in this field this is the bibliography from where i have prepared my slides and thank you very much with a note from charles darwin it is not the strongest of the species who survive nor the most intelligent also rather it is the it is those who are most responsive to change by charles darwin thank you so much any questions and comments are most welcome thank you ma'am so if you people have any queries i am here i have still few minutes to answer your queries i can see www concept www is the world wide web but uh, it is uh, i should say today that it is the old web so that is the www concept uh, today tim berners lee has come up with the semantic web concept so we are working with semantic web participants any question from your side no um, i think it's all over uh, thank you for a very very beautiful presentation and very interesting it was uh, we were the presentation the slides which were prepared were very amazing and they fascinated the participants a lot i hope so and maybe they will be opting this in this particular direction they will be moving for their as a research area also very beautifully explained thank you ma'am for your time and for your wonderful session uh, thank you dr nidhi it was my pleasure to have uh, the wonderful number of audience in this talk and i am happy helping any of the uh, participants there may be researchers and there may be scholars also so here i drop my email id in the chat box also for you people to copy so if you people have any queries regarding this you can always drop it in to me later also i am open to your queries thank you so much thank Bye -bye. you ma'am thanks a lot yeah dr nidhi i can disconnect now yes ma'am yeah okay thank you bye bye